Hi, third graders, welcome back. We're gonna continue with the story knots on a counting rope today. And we're gonna um, pick up where we left off yesterday, but we're not gonna finish the story today. We're gonna wait um, a couple more days to finish that. But I wanna remind you, we're talking about um, oral traditions, right? When they tell stories about history orally, they share that out loud, right? And we were trying to think yesterday, what does that counting rope have to do with this story? It's knots on a counting rope where the grandfather and the grandson are talking and telling story about the day that the boy was born. And remember we pointed out that the text changes, right? And you can tell who's talking based on the position of that text. It's just a conversation between these two people. So we left off here yesterday with the blue horses to give the boy strength after he was born. And that is when you named me, isn't it, Grandfather? After you smiled your first smile, we had the naming ceremony. All of the grandmothers and grandfathers were there. And you named me, Boy Strength of Blue Horses. It is a strong name. Did I need a strong name, Grandfather? All children need a strong name to help them grow strong. And I grew strong, didn't I? Yes, boy strength of blue horses, and each day you are growing stronger. You are learning to cross the dark mountains. I already have crossed some of the dark mountains. There will be more, boy. Dark mountains are always around us. They have no beginnings, and they have no endings. But we know they're there, Grandfather when we suddenly feel afraid. Yes, boy, afraid to do what we have to do. Will I always have to live in the dark? Yes, boy, you were born with a dark curtain in front of your eyes, but there are many ways to see, grandfather. Yes, boy, you are learning to see through your darkness because you have the strength of blue horses. So here's a picture from when he was a baby, right? A lot of people around, they're giving him his name. I see the horses with my hands, Grandfather, but I cannot see the blue. What is blue? You know morning, boy. Yes, I can feel morning. Morning throws off the blanket of night. And you know sunrise. Yes, I hear sunrise in the song of the birds. And you know sky, boy. Yes, sky touches my face, soft like lamb's wool, and I breathe its softness. Blue is all of these. Blue is the feeling of a spring day beginning. Try, try to see it, boy. Blue, blue, blue is the morning, the sunrise, the sky, the song of the birds. Oh, I see it. Blue, blue, blue is happiness, grandfather. I feel it in my heart. There was a sweep of blue in the rainbow, boy. That morning your horse was born. Oh, tell me that part, grandfather. I could not see the rainbow, but I can still feel its happiness. I awakened you, boy, during the night, remember? Just before the foal was born. And you said to me, come boy, Circles is ready to fold. Circles is the name of a horse. The colt will be yours. It was a long night of rain, cold rain, and we put a blanket over Circles, Grandfather, to keep her warm. Yes, boy, as the sun came through the clouds, the foal was born, and a rainbow danced across the sky. And it was a good sign, boy. And I named the little wet foal Rainbow. You have trained her well, boy. Rainbow is smart, Grandfather. Like you, she is good at remembering. Remember, in the story, this is what's happening right now. They are sharing this counting rope, right, with knots on it. They're telling a story right now, back and forth. Right? But these pictures are, are the story, right? When he was born, his grandfather took him outside 
I gave him a name. Right, so they're remembering back in, in past history. Here's a picture of the boy that he looks like now. You notice those blue beads from earlier when at the naming ceremony. He's wearing those now. And this is when he's on his horse. His horse's name is Rainbow. Right, so he's picturing all these things. There's a lot of symbolism in this story. We've talked about symbolism before. There's also something called literal and non-literal language. It has to do with things kind of being right there and being obvious, and then thinking deeper. So we're gonna look at a couple things and then we'll finish our story tomorrow. Okay, so let's think about what is literal versus non-literal language, right? If it's literal, right, it's very clear. It says what it, it means. It's like what it says in the dictionary, okay? If it's non-literal, then it's not clear. There's a little bit of a hidden meaning. You have to really be thinking what this means. Okay, so here's some examples. If someone says, wait a minute, right, you know what that means. But if someone says, hold your horses, do, are they really asking you to hold on to real horses? No, they're telling you to wait, right? They're, they're telling you to do this, but in, in kind of a hidden meaning kind of a way. Okay, somebody might want you to be quiet and they tell you that. Or they might say, hold your tongue or zip it. Right? That means to stop talking. Hold your tongue, right? If you're hold, holding your tongue, you can't talk. If you're zipping it, you're supposed to be quiet, right? So they're telling you something without really telling you. You have to be inferring what they're asking you to do. Okay? Someone might tell you or ask you to tell a secret, or they might say, ooh, don't let the cat out of the bag, right? Don't tell a secret. Okay? Are you really, do you really have a cat inside of a bag that they want you to let out or not let out? I don't think so. What if someone's really hungry? Right? They might say something like, I could eat the entire refrigerator. Do they really mean they could eat the appliance that's in their kitchen that holds all their food and drink? No, that just means they could, they're so hungry they could eat everything that's inside of it, right? Because they're so famished. So literal versus non-literal language is in a lot of stories and it's in the story that we're reading today. Remember I told you there's some symbolism in there. We're talking on page 13 about some dark mountains. Okay, so I have a chart here that talks about a word or a phrase from the story, what it literally means, right? Like what, if you looked in the dictionary and what it, it means kind of a hidden meaning, right? So on page 13, let me show you what that picture is. This is when they're talking about the dark mountains all around. It's at this picture right here talks about that's when he was named he says you're growing stronger you're learning to cross the dark mountains and then the boy says that I've already crossed some dark mountains grandfather says there will be more they're always around us they have no beginning no ending right so you have to be thinking are they really in the mountains and they're just surrounded by mountains or does this have a hidden meaning right what, what does that mean in the story so on page 13, when they say dark mountains, if I'm literally thinking, what is a dark mountain? Well, it's mountains with no light, right? But in a non-literal meaning, and that prefix non means not, so literal and not literal, right? That can mean difficult hurdles in someone's life, right? He says he's already encountered some dark mountains, right? And grandfather says, they're all around us. Right? You're going to have more dark mountains. So today, one of your assignments is obviously to listen to this lesson, but is to be thinking about that literal and non-literal meaning when you read stories. To do a lot of inferring, right? And you have to think a little bit deeper than just what the story says. Good readers do that. They think, okay, I might be confused, but what does that mean? What is he talking about dark mountains? Right? If it's not obvious that there are literally dark mountains around, there's a hidden meaning and it thinks it means something different. And you have to think about, okay, what does this mean in the story? Is it a symbol? How can I make sense of what it's trying to say? Right? So dark mountains in that particular part of the story are hurdles, difficult things that somebody needs to get through in life. Okay? So when we finish the story, um, the next time that we meet, 
we'll talk about kind of some of this symbolism in the story and we'll talk a little bit more in depth about what's really happening. So hopefully you're, you're thinking and you're trying to kind of dig a little bit deeper on your own.